In custom car audio, we can obviously make upgrades to our speakers, to subwoofers, to amplifiers, and even to our install, but these upgrades can easily get expensive. What are five things that we can do right now to our existing sound system that are cost effective and easy to do to improve the sound? That's coming up. Hey guys, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. I'm Mark and here on this channel, I do videos like this one. I do review videos and I also do build log videos where I show you guys every step of the process for creating one of a kind custom car audio installations. If that sort of thing interests you, be sure to check out some of my other videos. So let's get right into this. What is the first cheap thing that we can do to upgrade and enhance the sound on our existing car audio system? Well, number one is using this stuff right here. This this is speaker gasketing tape. So what is this stuff? So speaker gasketing tape, as you can see, it's kind of a foam layer. And on, on the other layer here, we have this protective backing. But if we peel that away, we have an adhesive layer. And with that adhesive layer, we can stick it on something like this, a ring. And I don't want to use up a bunch of it, but you would obviously go around the whole outside. And the idea here is when you do put your speaker in, it's going to give you a much better seal. The advantage of creating that seal around the ring using the speaker gasketing tape is a couple of different things. First of all, it's really important to separate the front wave from the rear wave of the speaker. By separating the two, we're not going to have any distortion or cancellation. So by using the speaker gasketing tape, we're really going to make sure that that air from the other side of the speaker can't get to the front. Now the other thing is, I've seen it all the time on subwoofer boxes, people will be playing their subwoofer, you can run your hand around here and you can easily feel air coming out, if not even hear it. If there's air coming out around the outside of the subwoofer flange, that means that we don't have a perfect seal, so we're not getting optimum performance out of our subwoofer. Also, depending on how close the subwoofer or the speakers are to your listening position, being able to hear that air whooshing noise, it detracts from the sound. We will be hearing things that aren't part of the music. The speaker gasketing tape is really simple to use and it's cost effective. Now, I like using the stuff that's specifically made for speakers. I'll drop a link for you guys down in the video description. Now, what's the next thing that we can change in order to improve our sound? Well, this one is more of a check and that's checking the polarity. What do I mean by checking the polarity? Well, all of our speakers are going to have a positive lead and a negative lead. What we wanna do is we wanna make sure that at the amplifier or at the head unit that our positive positive is connected to positive and vice versa. Now why is this important? Well, if we have two different speakers and one is working opposite of the other, rather than working together, generally speaking, they're gonna work against each other and cause cancellation and distortion and other issues. So for speakers, if the polarity is incorrect, we can have a loss in mid bass. And if we're running a system with multiple subwoofers, there can be a huge loss in subwoofer output if the polarity is incorrect. Now, what if you're using a speaker where the terminals aren't labeled? How can we actually check and make sure that we have the correct polarity. What we can do here is we can take a double A battery and we're going to touch one wire to the positive lead and the other wire to the negative lead of the battery. When we do this, we want the speaker to move out. And if it does move out, that tells us that the wire we are touching to the positive terminal of the battery is the positive terminal. If the speaker moves in, then that means that the wire that we're touching to the positive terminal of the battery is actually the negative terminal of the speaker. Do keep in mind though that this battery test is only half of the battle. That only really proves that we have the correct label here at the speaker, we do want to again make sure and verify that our positive lead is connected to the positive terminal on our amplifier or on our head unit. So now moving on, item number three that we can easily change in order to make our sound system sound better is built-in tuning controls. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, just because we have a factory radio, that doesn't mean that we can't do some light tuning. Nearly all vehicles are going to have balance and fade built into the factory head unit. You will also find balance and fade on aftermarket head units. Now, how can we use balance and fade to improve the sound? Well, a lot of times you guys hear me talk about having a center image. Ideally, the goal is to make it sound like you have a nice sound stage. Let's go over into the vehicle. If I'm sitting here in the driver's seat of the vehicle, when I'm listening to music, ideally it's going to sound like the band is playing right in front of me. I'm going to 
hear the main singer right here in the center. I might hear a guitar off to the side and so forth. With my balance, I control to the left and to the right. So basically what I'm doing is I'm making more sound come out of the left speaker if I change it to the left here. And what that can do is I can actually shift the center image from here to the middle. Now what about fade or from front to back? Depending on how you listen to your music, if you just want it to be as loud as possible, you can leave your fade in the center so that you have sound coming from all speakers. But if you consider yourself an audiophile, what you can do is you can actually shift more of the sound up to the front, again to improve the sound stage and make it sound like all the instruments and singer is right in front of you. Now while we're on the topic here, if you do have an existing amplifier as part of your system, it is important to make sure that all the amplifier settings are also tuned correctly. Now this is a little bit more of an involved process, but I have a full video about the details up in the corner of the screen. Now since we're taking a look at this amplifier, this is a good time to say thank you to our monthly show sponsor, Audio Control. This amplifier is the LC-6.1200, and you'll notice that this has quite a few dials and switches compared to most amplifiers. For instance, we have this front high level adjustment and we also have this summing control. Along with those controls we also have the AccuBase. All of these different settings allow us to better interface with a factory car audio system. This is definitely a one-of-a-kind amplifier. If you guys would like to see a full review video you can check it out up in the corner of the screen. Moving on number four another easy thing that we can do to improve our sound and that is to eliminate rattles. Now of course there are sound deadening materials and the full sound treatment process that I've shown you guys in some of the other videos, but that process obviously requires quite a bit of time and has some costs associated with it. So what I wanna talk about here is kind of that low hanging fruit, those easy to fix rattles. So first off, the obvious solutions. If you have a ton of spare change or whatever knickknacks sitting in your center console and you have a subwoofer in that vehicle that rattles the center console, you're going to hear all that change rattling constantly. It's going to take away from the experience and the true sound that you're hearing. The same goes for random things stored in your door panels. You should remove all of that stuff if you can. Something else that's notorious for causing rattle noises is the wire that you run to the subwoofer within the subwoofer box. Guys, for something like that, all it takes is a cheap roll of tape. You just tape that wire inside the enclosure. That way you're not worried about it bouncing around inside there or even worse, smacking up against the backside of the subwoofer cone. Another simple fix. Now for the next item, I'd love to tell all you guys to go out and buy a lossless audio player and use optical out into a DSP and go all out but I understand that not everyone's system is going to have those capabilities. So how can we improve our audio quality with what most of us already use in the vehicle? First off, let's talk about the actual song data files that we have stored on our device. It seems like more and more a popular way of obtaining music is to go to a streaming site like YouTube and to download that video and take the audio file out of it and use that as music. Now what you have to remember here is with streaming services like YouTube, for example, when you upload that file, it's going to get downgraded in quality. So that means if somebody is then taking that file and somehow transferring it to their device and using it as a song file, that file is going to be heavily compressed. And with compressed music, it's not going to sound as good. We're not going to hear all the original detail that is meant to be there. This is why it's a good idea to consider subscription services for example, something like Apple Music in order to actually obtain all of the music files that you ultimately transfer to your device. Now there is something you wanna watch out for when you are transferring those files to your device. You wanna make sure that you dig through the settings and you find the highest quality setting. By default, a lot of times these programs will reduce the file size of songs so that you can get more and more on your device. But let's be honest, you can get a device that literally has hundreds of gigabytes of storage nowadays it's really not as much of a concern, so I definitely recommend opting for the highest quality files that you can play. Now, let's talk about streaming apps like Pandora and Spotify. A lot of people don't know this, but with these apps, there is a setting that you can change in order to opt for having the higher quality files. Now this of course does mean that you're gonna have more data transfer, so if you're not on an unlimited plan with your cell phone, that's something you might want to be careful of and be aware of. I know, I know, it seems like kind of a no-brainer, but a lot of people don't know about those settings, and if you want the best sound out of your car audio system and your streaming, 
you should definitely change it. So there we have it, five cheap and easy changes we can make to our existing system for better sound. If you enjoyed this video, maybe you'll like some of my others. If you'd like to make sure that you see my future videos, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Special thanks to Audio Control for being a monthly sponsor, and thanks to John, Brian, John, Ali, Nick, Bo, Steve, Jerry, Emmanuel, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. You guys can check out details to that down below. Again, thank you for watching.